Hello everybody, I'm Michael Gray, also known as Oracle Fumpf. This is Murder at Chateau de Rouge. So this is a murder mystery visual novel made by my friend Abigail. She likes Nancy Drew and terrible Pride and Prejudice spin-offs. So you know she's a great person. Let's get started. Chapter 1, A Stormy Start. Lady Diana Strawberry. It was Helena's letter that first drew me back to Chateau de Rouge. In the recesses of my mind, the chateau had always been a place of joy, so I was hardly prepared for that cold, gloomy, impersonal piece of architecture that greeted me. In my mind, I'm going to Caroline. I'm in my mind, Chateau de Rouge is mysterious. It's a large, mysterious mansion with hiding spots, a cook with great fudge, and flying kites. But when I returned, everything was different. The house had not fallen into disrepair. Quite the contrary. Everything was in place, but there was no life. I'm ashamed to say I hadn't spent much time there in the last several years, so of course some things had changed. Ooh, I'm liking the music. But it wasn't anything that had to do with the house. The house looks pretty much the same, but the cook was gone. And so was the fudge! into my old hiding hide-and-seek spots. Ah, oh, the hill is not sunny. In fact, it's very stormy. It's stormy here at Chateau de Rue. Maybe that colors my judgment. Or maybe I'm the one who's changed. Yet it wasn't until I spoke with my cousin Helena that I realized what was off. Uncle Monty. I loved my uncle like a father. daughter Helena like a sister. Although I'd passed around from relative to relative my entire childhood, no place felt like home except for the Montagues. Now that Uncle Monty, Monty Montague, is dead, Helena's in mourning. I was heartbroken. The chateau doesn't feel like home. Instead, it feels dead. Lifeless, broken, empty, the shell of a dead thing. I feel the same way. Okay, so this game is already starting off to a very dramatic start, and I love I love the, the, this artwork. This is this is really cool. So when Helena's letter reached me, asking me to come spend a few days with her, I didn't hesitate. I hoped maybe the good feelings would come back, but they didn't. They did not. And Helena told me she had a couple of other friends there. She asked me to come a few days early. I said, sure, why not? When I arrived, Helena was a wreck. I'd never seen her so upset. Her father and I are pretty much her only family, so it's understandable. The weather didn't help the situation either. Often we couldn't go about the town because of the rain and thunderstorms. It made the house feel very gloomy. Despite the gloom, I tried to reassure her that I would be there for her, and I asked her if she required anything, but she simply shook her head and said she had everything she could want, except her father. She was right, of course. She was a Montague. Her father had been fabulously wealthy, and it stood the reason that she would not only inherit the beautiful mansion, but all of the money. Of course, it was famously known throughout the village and by anyone who knew Uncle Monty that he didn't believe in banks. He kept all of the money hidden inside Chateau de Rouge. Oh my, really? Really? Are we going to have a mystery finding the money? I didn't know specifically where he kept the money. It's under his mattress. It's under his mattress. He kept billions of dollars in cash under his mattress. That's why his mattress was seven feet tall. Uh, I trusted Helena would continue to want for nothing. Shortly after my arrival, one of the guests showed up. His name was Sir Grayson Dorian, and I had a vague inclination that Helena mentioned me, mentioned him once or twice. For some reason, I thought I heard his name somewhere else. I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure where. He had very dark hair and a swarthy bearing. Apparently, Helena had met him years ago on a trip to... Fr You're talking about him right in front of him. He can hear you, Lady Diana Strawberry. When her father passed, she thought the two closest people in her life were me and Grayson. That's why she wanted us both here early. To be honest, I was surprised her Grayson actually came. Uh, Helena's kind of a loner, right? She never really had a lot of friends. She'd already been a good, she's always been a good friend to me, even though the bond of cousinhood tied us together. Apparently, she likes Grayson, too. Although, how much does she like him? That remains to be seen. This Sir Grayson does 
seem to be something of a charmer. He does look handsome and charming, I can say that. <laughs> Good evening, Lady Strawberry. How delightful to finally make your acquaintance. You are as lovely as I'd imagined, and as delightful and elegant as Helena described. He took a sweeping bow, and his lips brushed against my hand in a polite kiss. Despite his charm and the kiss on the hand, I could tell it was all a facade. He was putting on the charm. There was no intrigue or, or true interest behind it. I wasn't really sure what to think of him. Should I judge him? Or should I give him the benefit of the doubt? Well, this does look like we're starting off on romance right on the start. I'm going to judge him. I'm going to judge this guy. I'm going to go for the mean option here because that seems like it could be more fun. He was all show, which from my previous interaction with Frenchmen did not surprise me much. I wonder briefly, what on earth does Helena see with seeing him? A pompous, showy man who clearly thinks... He is God's gift to women. For a brief moment, I wondered why he was here. Oh, of course he was invited. But maybe there's more to it. Was he after her money? Why was he even in England to begin with? He was very quick to show up. Whatever I thought of him didn't matter. He was here, and our goal was to comfort Helena. But the poor dear was so distraught that nothing we could say or do. We, we couldn't distract her from the loss of her father. And to be honest, I can't blame her. I was trying not to cry myself. Oh man, I kind of thought that Grayson would talk in that scene there, but apparently not. He just says hello and just stands there. We were all comforted by the presence of Helena's maid, Charlotta. She regularly brought us tea, served our meals, and overall kept us in reasonably good spirits. She even provided us with candles and holders when the electricity knocked out one evening. I took note of her efficiency and applauded it. As much as I missed the old cook's fudge, I had to admit that Charlotta's shortbread cookies hit the spot. I even saw Helena smile. That is very, like, uh, this maid does not seem very interested in anything right now. She looks really bored. I was unsure what to think of the maid. As she served us our meal, I observed her silently. I want to know more about her, because Helena had never mentioned the change of staff in any of her letters, so I was curious as to how she became part of the Montague household. I had never seen Charlotta before, so I was afraid that too many detailed questions about her employment and past might be seen as impertinent. I finally decided I should be super impertinent or be very nice. I'm going to be impertinent. I'm going to go along with the, what I did earlier to uh, Grayson. I'm just going to be kind of a jerk. Since most people enjoy talking about themselves, I decided to take the chance and ask Charlotta a little bit about herself. Charlotta, tell me, did you live nearby before coming to work at Chateau de Rouge? Yes, mum. My family lives in the village below the chateau. How lovely. So you were born and raised here? Why, yes, we've always lived here, and I love the English moors and countryside estates. From a young age, I dreamed of living in one of these beautiful mansions. I never dreamt I'd ever get the chance. Is that why you chose to work here? Yes, Mum. Charlotta hesitated a moment, and I wondered what was wrong. She looked down suddenly, as if sad. I wondered if I'd said something wrong. Or perhaps... If she was afraid to talk much about her family and her upbringing in front of her employer, Helena, I decided to let the uh, matter drop. The last thing I wanted to do was embarrass Charlotta or get her into some sort of trouble with my cousin. That night the rain came again, harder than it had on any of the previous days. I should have known that it was a harbinger of, a harbinger of danger Perhaps, in a way, I did. All I know for sure is that the rain was so hard it swelled the river around the mansion, causing it to rise. That happened a few times in the past. Each time there was major flooding, often forcing people to... So, the rain traps us inside the chateau. It would be really terrible if somebody died here and we had to solve the murder mystery. Wouldn't that really be terrible? Maybe this cousin Helena, who I've talked so much about but hasn't actually appeared on screen at any point, I have a feeling she might be the murder victim.